Fine cider is all about quality fruit, and it also requires a bit of equipment to get it from apple to bottle. That's why on this week's episode, we are featuring a conversation with a manufacturer of cider making and wine making equipment, and they are based in Slovenia, a country of absolute beauty and families steeped deep into the tradition of fermenting fruit. So stick with me while we speak to Jan Schrammel of Schrammel, a cutting edge provider of cider making equipment based in Slovenia. Hey, 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 my name is Rhea Wincoller, and I am the producer and cider MC of this weekly podcast, where we speak with makers, cider enthusiasts, and folks within the cider trade from around the world. We are in one of those upside down times of the year where we just crossed a threshold called solstice. So on June 21st, Summer started in the Northern Hemisphere, and in the Southern Hemisphere, they're kicking into winter. So a lot of winter celebrations are going to be coming up. I'm sure some wassails that they'll be doing down in Australia and New Zealand and who knows in Latin America. If you're doing it down there, let me know so I could share it with all the listeners out there in Ciderville. Either way you cut it, right now for me, it's going to be like the longest days of the year. And then it starts getting shorter, which is always kind of like a weird time of the year for me because I just love those long summer days where it's like nine o'clock in the evening and it's still light out. But that's a little bit short lived. And that is how the cycles of the seasons roll, at least where I am. We do have four seasons. I'm based in New England and it's been a rather chilly June so far. I'm not complaining too much because it's good for the bugs and I'm uh, just out in my little orchard orchard, kind of pruning around the different trees and bushes that I have out there and uh, getting everything all settled up. And, you know, it's not too rough for that little orchard. But if you're a big production site and really super dependent on your orchards, I don't know, you know, I'm kind of curious. Let me know. How's it going where you are as we kind of keep track of the climate changings going around in different parts of Ciderville? Always an interesting time, right? Well, anyways, welcome to the show. We got a cool interview with Jan Schrammel, who came all the way from Slovenia to attend CiderCon 2022 because he has, with his family, a manufacturing business where they make and design cider making equipment. And of course, it also has that parallel universe with winemaking equipment too. So if you're in any kind of like fermenting scene, you're going to get a lot out of this. And I think really specifically, the cool thing about it is knowing where products come from. And if you're going to sign up to something, will it deliver all the way through? Or will you be left on an an isolated island somewhere once you get your product? I mean, that's really what it comes down to in 2022 and moving forward. What is the service like? You know, you might have the best product in the world, but if you're in, you know, a cliffhanger of a moment where you need some help and you can't get that, then it really matters where you are getting your equipment from. And yes, a little bit of transparency. Schrammel has been a sponsor of Cider Chat, but, uh, you know, the way I like to roll is if when I find good people, <laughs> you know, I like to really let you out there in Ciderville know about them. And uh, so it's one part sponsorship, but it's also really just the fact that folks who like Cider Chat are often folks just like yourself. They are cool people and they are thinking out of the bubble and they're thinking beyond their own regional territory and really encompassing the world. They want to be connected with all and each and every one of us, right? So that that I think is just how I see it. And that's why we're featuring Shrammel this week. So do stay tuned for that. And meanwhile, let's do a little bit of news from Out and About in Ciderville. On that same note about folks who love to expand their horizons outside of their own bubble, well, a whole bunch of us are headed to Normandy and Brittany this fall, this coming September. And that cider tour is now completely sold out. 
So I'm sorry if you're hearing this for the first time. You could always send an email to info at ciderchat.com to get on the waiting list uh, or at least be notified for the next Cider Tour that will be rolling out in 2023. But in the meanwhile, well, I am absolutely floored because, you know, the cool thing about it, all these folks heard about it on Cider Chat, which means that we all arrive kind of having familiarity from the get-go. And it's absolutely lovely. In, in fact, we have some folks who have gone on the French Cider Tour already that are returning. So, yowza, boy, that tells you something right there. And, uh, you know, being there to be able to taste the fruit when it's coming right off the tree, it just expands your your horizons. It's just an education that you cannot get out of a book. So you're able to taste, you know, the pear or the apple and then taste the calvados and the different types of calvados that are made and the different types of pomo that are made and the cedar and the poire. Just, boof, that along on how they pair all that with food and gastronomic experiences, and then how it is also presented. The certain type of class that you get in France is is rather educational. And I think for savvy business owners, it's a great way to spend some time. Uh, you know, you're really so free from any care. So I uh, can't wait. Anyways, so that's all done, which allows me to move on to my next project, and I'm going to announce that in just a moment. So give me a little pause here and I'll be right back. I almost think we need a little bit of a drum roll for this announcement. What do you think, Mr. Quince? <coughs> you got it, Rhea. After two long years of having to reel in cider events, I am so pleased to announce on this year's podcast for the first time ever that this coming November, the first weekend of November, Cider Chat is helping to reboot Cider Days with Cider Days 2.0. Cider Days 2.0 will kick off on Friday evening, November 4th, with a Calvados and American Apple Brandy tasting. This guided tasting will be presented by both myself and Ambrosia Borowski, who is based in Chicago and is a leading brandy and cider expert. Ambrosia is also the general manager of the Northman Beer and Cider Garden that is based along the Riverwalk in the city of Chicago. In 2019, this tasting sold out. And this year, we have even more Calvados than we had in 2019. And the American Apple Brandy is going to blow your mind. That's why I am starting early to help you learn about Cider Days 2.0 because I do not want you to miss out on these ticketed events because you know that they are going to sell out early. In fact, tickets for the Calvados and American Alba Brandy will be going live the first week of August. So don't worry, I got your back. Yeah! Go to ciderchat.com and sign up today for the eCider newsletter. And make sure to follow Cider Chat on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Cider Chat Ciderville, because all the announcements will also be listed there. And I really want to see you here at Cider Days 2.0, so I could say my favorite thing to you when we meet. Here, you want to try this? And now it's time for our featured presentation, an interview with Jan Schrammel. He came in from Slovenia to attend CiderCon 2022, and it was a great opportunity for the two of us to sit down and get to know each other. I wanted to hear the backstory of the family and how Schrammel came to be, and he definitely delivered. So it's very informative. In fact, the company is based not too far from the Adriatic Sea. So if you look at Italy, you know, that classic big old boot, and to the east is the Adriatic Sea. And so Slovenia, for your geography here, Slovenia is based next to Italy by the Adriatic Sea. It's not a large coastline there, but it's coastline nonetheless. So the company itself is quite close to Italy. And so that'll just give you a regionality of this area. And the town itself, well, he's going to be speaking about that. It's not a really huge population. In fact, probably most of the folks there work at Schrammel. So I have a sense of this really like quality and commitment and pride 
that folks working at this plant put into each and every one of the tools for cider makers and winemakers alike. And I think that, I mean, that's important to you if you are looking for that. And even if you're not a maker, a commercial maker, I think you'll find this conversation enlightening. And certainly in this time of day right now where we like to know how the products that we're purchasing are being made and who is making it. That's really important because where we spend our money matters. And that's why I'm really proud to bring to you this conversation with Jan. So make sure to grab a glass and join this chat with Jan Schrammel, who is based along with his family and a team of dedicated workers in the town of Padnanos in the country of Slovenia. Shramal, it's a family company which was founded by my father and my uncle. And now we are the second generation that we are managing the company with my cousins. Uh, initially, we started with the uh, production of uh, winemaking equipment, especially in uh, pneumatic presses. Uh, the, the, the idea came from my father because he's an engineer and he was he's also a winemaker and he was in a need of a, a pneumatic press. So he built himself a press because it was much more affordable than buying a new press. And then the idea came with his brother, and they founded the company. Soon after, we, um, uh, we the kids, we uh, came together with them, and uh, we then had to our offer also equipment to, making, uh, to make juice, especially apple juice. Um, then on, this, on top of this, automatic bottling lines, and now that the cider is growing a lot and we already have equipment for many years for making juice, we can use them also to make cider because the first part is actually the same. And wine making or uh, cider making, for us it's quite similar. So even if we are not coming from cider making uh, country, it's not so popular in Slovenia, but it's very popular the wine. So mm-hmm. the technology we know a lot. Mm-hmm. For many years, from many generations, that it's passing through where we are coming from. Every house has a wine cellar, so everyone is making wine. What does a wine cellar look like in a, a, a local house? You know, it's a small, that it's actually in the basement because the, we're speaking about the old houses, the traditional old houses. It was part of the house, the basement. Could be just a small room, could be a bit bigger. I would say ours is like a. I don't know. The is, is it like um, uh, a stone foundation? Like yeah, absolutely. Dig in the in the in the, the ground. Soil, in the ground. Yeah, yeah. Usually, you have um, a rock bottom mm-hmm. covered, and it's very traditional. And so you walk. You know, you take the steps down into we would call it the basement or the cellar. Yeah, yeah. Do you or, have a particular name for it? Do you call it a cellar or? Oh, yeah. It's only our part of the, the way that we're coming. We call it Hrem. How do you spell that? Hrem. Hrem. Uh, H-R-M. H-R-M. Okay, Hrem. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. That's a good word to know if you're going to your country to be able to say, okay, where's the Hrem around here? Yeah, we say, let's, uh, so let's go to Hrem. Hrem or Hrem. And we go to drink a wine. And nice. So if, if, wine. if you went down there, is there like seating or is it just a place that you go and gather the bottles and bring it out? Or could it uh, be? No, that would be um, tanks or okay. or barrels would be. Barrels? So be da- uh, you'll go down and pour yourself a glass from a, bar- from a tank or from a barrel and you'll be with friends tasting the wine. I love that. And, uh, you know, usually it was not... So much into bottles. Now the getting bottles becoming very popular, and uh, mm-hmm. so chrom is for the barrels and tanks. Right, and and for the the family to do. I I just want listeners out there in Ciderville to know right now that as soon as I asked Jan here about the local tradition and chrom. His face absolutely just lit up, and I saw complete joy. So that just tells me a lot about who you are and the, the passion in your family for that. And I, I want to just understand a little bit more about your country, Slovenia, and, and, and how it's so integrated. So would each home have maybe grapes growing outside? 
and, yeah. and pressing their own Yeah, product. so each house, which was a farm, it has uh, its own uh, vineyard and their own uh, vine cellar. And uh, one region is divided into three regions in Slovenia. So we are the west part, and then we have also on the east part another two. Very cool. And how about apple trees? Uh, is that something that you would see in, in the area? Or yeah, homes? there are apple trees, but it was never so traditional to make cider, especially not because we had wine. Mm-hmm. Uh, more on the northern part of uh, Slovenia, there was cider. Okay, it was actually apple wine because it was not sparkling. Mm-hmm. So they just fermented as a wine and it was uh, flat. I see. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. They, they were not growing um, uh, grapes there because mm-hmm. it's uh, too cold. Mm-hmm. And they grow or apples or other fruits. They had it uh, for spirits or for, I see. Uh, for apple wine. Here's your father, your uncle started the company. And I'm wondering for yourself, and, and it's also your brother who leads the company. Is that true? A cousin. Cousin. Okay, cousin. thank you. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, was this something like early on when they were bringing you both up that it was like, okay, you're going to be coming into the family's company? Is this something that was always expected or were you on a, a different no, path? No, it was completely organic because Interesting. we helped to build up the company. Yeah. It was completely organic. We started working there as a like a summer job. Okay. Uh, we were working in uh, production and slowly we merged into the managing and after it was like, okay, we're done here, said our fathers, and you can go through. <laughs> so, so, but was it an expectation that you would slowly go into the company, or were you kind of growing up and thinking, well, I want to hang out in the firm and, and make wine in Slovenia, or, you know, become an engineer myself? Or I am an engineer You myself, are an engineer, so, okay, um, so you did want to become an engineer, all right. Yeah, so I, I, I started for, to be an engineer, but it was always... I don't know. I actually never really thought deep about it. How mm, everything okay. it was just so organic that I love that it yeah. was stuck back in my mind, but not really think about it. Uh-huh. Are so. you a mechanical engineer? Yeah, mechanical. Oh, that makes sense. Wonderful. You now in this position of running an international company. Let's tell folks out there in Sardeville, um a little bit about your product and how it stands out on the market, and, and specific, of course, for for cider makers. Yeah, so our idea is always to, to offer to our clients a complete solution. So we are not in a position that we're just selling selling a machine and then, okay, do whatever you do. But really that you, ha- you have a solution that you can find or um, you can do your product at the end, not get involved, you know, that you start this machine and how it will be even operating. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is our main goal. Then we are really uh, focusing that everything is built and designed by ourselves mm-hmm. so that we have the um, we can manage the quality as well and uh, that we don't have uh, problems on the market because it's not our idea because you know the machines have our surname on written on them so I could feel your be, pride I could feel yeah. your pride I mean you <laughs> know it should be working you know <laughs> it should be working and that's that's a good way I mean you know from the get go Working with a family-run company, that is, that's kind of like, um, it's unique on the market. And it really means something because your surname is on, on machinery. Exactly. That's down at the trade show right now here at CiderCon. You know, it's right out front. And I could feel the pride. So the, the equipment that we have here is for, you know, a larger operation. What, what is the different levels of equipment that you offer Yes, so we are starting with approximately 500 uh, kilos per hour. And then we have equipment in the range up to 10 tons per hour. So I'll say that we are really targeting small and medium uh, capacity producers. Okay. Just a side note here for those of us who are metrically challenged. One kilo equals just over two pounds, making 500 kilos equal to roughly over 1,100 pounds. Up next, Jan will be talking about the two different types of presses that are provided by Schrammel. We have two types of presses. Okay. The pneumatic one, which was originally for winemakers and was adapted to press also ciders. So it's a very flexible uh, press, mm-hmm. which um, 
if you have a very difficult apple or fruit, it will be it will extract really good quali good quality and good mm -hmm. uh, efficiency. And then we have the continuous belt press, which is a simple machine to use, uh, fast in terms of pressing. So two different types depending uh, what uh, the cider maker is looking into. Mm -hmm. Well, I know Alex at Apple City Cider in Kazakhstan. Yeah. And they're dealing with a different kind of apple variety. You know, well, it's apple, of course, but I, from what I understand is that there had to be some adaptations, and they use your equipment. Um, do you know anything about that? Did you work directly with Alex? or? Um, yeah, sure. I was the one managing his project. W wonderful. So can you tell us a little bit about maybe that the unique circumstances? Or was, was there anything unique or uh, that he had to do? Because it sounded like there was something in terms of the... Yeah, so for us, not so unique, but maybe for a cider market, especially in the craft cider market, it's... Uh, the apples are enzymated for pressing mm -hmm. so that we can extract more and we can extract something that with normal pressing cannot, like some flavors, depending on the um, enzymes that are being used. And uh, because the pneumatic press, it's a, it's a batch press. So you are milling the apple, you fill the cylinder, and then we'll, we'll go into the pressing program. Before pressing, we can even do the maceration we can do, for example, for Keef cider. It's a perfect solution. For example, if you have a belt press, when you have just a meal that's go directly into the press and it's pressing, it will be a bit difficult to incorporate as a, some maceration unit. And the pneumatic press, it's just perfect for such So how does that application. work for the, ma the maceration? Um, can you give us like a visual walk through that? So the maceration is you're milling the apples, and you let them rest. So they the rest for maybe 24 hours. Yeah, or yeah. even more. Or more. So yes. is that like a side, I don't know, tank or something that? No, it's uh, actually the press itself. Because the press, it has a cylinder, which is rotating. Mm -hmm. On the one side, you have the membrane, which is inflating and creating the pressure inside. On the other side, you have the draining uh, channels where the juice will drain from the mesh, being collected and drained through through the opening on the cylinder uh, into the collection vessel. Because it's sealed, the cylinder, you can feel uh, inside the mm -hmm. um, mesh, and you can wait with the mesh until you start the press. So there would be no oxygen contact at that point after the apples have been milled up? Depending. We have also presses which are pressing in inert atmosphere. But if you are working with the cube cider, you want the oxygen to be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it goes for different circumstances, with oxygen yeah. or without. Can the same machine do both? Yeah, of course, of course. So okay. we, we don't want to dictate the technology to our, our cider maker. We are really focusing that they are choosing what they want. So we have all the different, uh, different applications because we are not in the position to teach anyone how to make cider, no? We just help them to simplify their technology they want to use. Uh, we know this from the winemakers because no winemakers they know what they want, you know? <laughs> that, mm -hmm. how they want to do it. Mm -hmm. They just need the technology. Now you're at the trade show here at CiderCon, and you're with another company. Can you talk about the collaboration there and and how that works out? Or if folks in the U.S. wanted to work with your company, would they be working with you yeah, directly, or or you know your so, sales folks? So Crivella, it's our distributor for North America. Okay. We've been working together for many years. Very good. And they are providing the first sales support and after sales support, mm -hmm. the equipment startup and the maintenance of the equipment. All this is providing so a full package. Okay. From us. Very good. And everybody likes to know where where is the equipment being made? Uh, equipment is designed and made inside our factory. So it's um, we're really targeting that we do everything, that we don't outsource much. So See? we do every, we're just receiving like a stainless steel plates or bar which are being cut 
and then uh, machine it, uh, weld it, assemble it. Uh, so everything is done in house. So we really have a focus that everything is done by us because that is what is giving it, giving us flexibility. Um, we can be faster on the production times, uh, and then if we have, we need to adapt the equipment. It's very simple because we have the engineering and uh, manufacturing just together, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and I would expect quality, high quality, because once again, your surname is on the equipment and yeah. you're on site in the company. So, how many people work, you know? Uh, uh, in this, and, and can you give us like a little visual if we were to drive up to your side, if we had the privilege of going to Slovenia and visiting, and I know that you're, you know, you're very close to the border of Italy, yeah. you know, cl- quite close to the sea, uh, a beautiful area. Is it a, a, a giant, like the size of this convention center, which is like massive, massive, or how, how is it? How is it done? Uh, depending how you're looking at it. For us, it's too small because <laughs> it's being too busy now. <laughs> you know, yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah, so currently we're a company of uh, 90 people. And, uh, oh, that's great. So far we're expanding, but we want to expand still in the range that we can manage everything. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we don't want to exaggerate because it's bringing a lot of problems, which we don't want. Mm-hmm. I still want to sleep at night. <laughs> yes, yeah, the pressure is on, no doubt. That That's wonderful. Uh, 90 people, and I don't know, the area, the town that you're in, is it uh, densely populated or? No, it's a small town, I think of 300, 400 people. My goodness. So it's wow. Podnanos, which means under the Nanos. The Nanos is the hill. So when you come, you'll see a hill, it's a nice view, and then a beginning of the valley. Wow. Um, you're all you're welcome anytime, and then we can go together to taste some local wines, which are the wineries just behind the corner. Oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah, wow, the, wow! Yeah, in the village. Yeah. Um, good food, restaurants. It's it's one of the um, places in the world that everybody says you have to go to Slovenia. It's just absolutely beautiful. Because of the culture and the food, the gastronomic experiences, and of course the wine, and I imagine now that you your company is now going with the cider market as it's growing, that I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing some Slovenian makers, cider makers. There are there yeah. are a couple of them starting now. Yeah, even we did some ciders in the company. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, there are some, and some of them are really good. Yeah, well, that's yeah. wonderful. Great. So, because it's meeting that knowledge from the wine, and yeah. uh, into, so they can quickly get a lot of knowledge from the winemakers. That's wonderful. How about the timeline? If if somebody was ordering equipment, what is the timeline for getting you know order into actual arrival here in the U.S.? Um, what would you? kind of be earmarking if folks are saying, well, I'm doing a startup cidery and I don't want to start small. I know I'm going to be expanding. So let me get the, the right equipment first. W- what can they expect? Yeah. So at this time, so I would say like our production time, it's three to four months, depending mm-hmm. on the size and the equipment. Then the shipping time, it's usually up to two months. It depends now, you know, it's right. <laughs> fluctuating a lot. Mm-hmm. So you have the I'm going to call it the scratcher or the grinder uh, to we call it the mill the mill right that works too a lot of different terms you have that um, any other equipment before that before the mill do you have something that would wash the apples yeah so now our offer we have the lines which are starting from the actual fruit or is it in crate or is it in beans or mm-hmm. as a bulk and then we'll go into the washing sorting line Mm-hmm. After we have an apple which is cleaned and sorted, can go in the mill and from the mill into the press. And after the press, we have the juice which is ready for ferment for fermentation. And we are finishing with the bottling equipment. I was wondering that was going to be my next question: bottling. Um, and a big thing that's happening in the U.S. is cans. You know, yes. a big market going that direction. How, uh, anything in the Future for that? Uh, 
it's no more the future, it's actually today that we are okay. offering ca uh, canning and bottling lines. All it's right. all, all in one. What, what kind of room, let me, let me ask it in this way, what kind of room with a, a cidery in the planning, the ideal size without, you know, becoming, you know, too giant, we're in a room right now. I'll speak with, with the numbers. So if you have like a line for 500 kilos per hour, that's our smallest one. It will be needed approximately 40 square meters. Okay. Then increasing up to 100 square meters. And that include a bottling line? Yeah, that will be included. In but bottling but line. not including the tanks because the tanks sure. are depending on, uh, right, on right. the batch sizes and okay. on the volumes. All right, very good. Because, you know, as you well know, for cider makers, it's often um, many are doing it one time per year. They're going through the pressing and, and all yeah, that. In the season time. Yeah. And so space is like really critical. And also having equipment for a maker who is just, I shouldn't say just, but their focus is pressing in the season, and then they're done for the rest of the season. That's how it is in the wine business. Okay, very <laughs> good. So just just out of curiosity, how easy is it to move the equipment once it gets settled in? Because I do see makers, smaller makers that I know who want to have good equipment, need to move it out of the way to be able to use that space. Sometimes they turn it into a tasting room at the same time. Yeah, that is very common, and uh, most of the equipment are on wheels. Okay. And the ones that are not on wheels are easy movable. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this must be always predicted because no one has a space to to have like eleven months the equipment there. Mm -hmm. Okay, where do you see the equipment going? I mean, you have this background in mechanical engineering. Are you seeing something for the future and saying, you know, I keep on wanting to tweak this? You know what I mean by tweak? Uh, yeah, I'm kind of curious how, how that works for you because with a engineering mind. I'm going to guess you do. Yeah, of course. It, I mean, it's it's my passion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not designing the machines anymore, but I have designed a lot of the machines. And I'm always thinking what could be done better, you know, <laughs> what could be uh, simplified for the maker. Because yeah. I'm even making a lot of startups. Uh, not that we don't have people, but I like to be there and to know how this equipment will work and uh, mm -hmm. from the first person. Uh, to have the feedback, and then I'm passing this to our engineers. Uh, What's the most difficult thing of learning how to run equipment like that for a maker? Uh, depending if they they don't have any knowledge in the processing machinery, Pro processing processing machi machinery, any kind of processing that will. Are you saying processing? Yeah, processing. Okay, machinery. thank you. Yes. <laughs> so they they don't have this knowledge. They have to learn how to. Actually, they use equipment to wash. For me, it's a bit difficult to, uh, to explain because it's uh, so intuitive for me. <laughs> right. Well, that yeah. that that's the thing, you know, like the architect versus the carpenter. Yeah. You know. Uh, but I would say uh, the most not difficult, but uh, the thing that you have to learn how to wash the equipment properly, because you don't don't uh, infect the equipment with some bacteria. Sure. That's very important. It's also our big focus on the on the designing that the equipment are easy to wash. Easy to wash, yeah. yeah. And um, and the products that you use to wash it, too. Yeah, so the features on the machine, actually. Mm -hmm. I don't want anyone that, uh, I will say to anyone that's not needing this equipment. I'm mm -hmm. here to help them, you know. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I'd like that they, they, they feel our story that I'm not just here, okay, here's the equipment, goodbye. Right. I, I would like to follow because I'm actually listening to your podcast and not uh, not actually making cider, but because I actually like this market, uh, because mm -hmm. I like wine, I like cider, mm -hmm. I like different spirits. Mm -hmm. uh, I enjoy this and uh, <laughs> making the equipment to make such, such the beverages even better. Mm -hmm. I really like sitting down with you because I was touched that it was a family-owned company and that there's yep. some legacy there. And I have a feeling it'll be a long-lasting legacy from a, a country that I've just heard nothing but beauty about. 
Thank you. And I think that often translates into what one does. If there's beauty in the landscape, the culture, then products that are produced there are often magnificent. But well, thank you so much for speaking to all of us here on Cider Chat today. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. You don't have to take my word that Sharamal is a company that you should be looking to if you're looking for cider or winemaking equipment. Just listen to last week's episode with Apple City Cider based in Kazakhstan. That is episode 323. There'll be a link in the show notes. And you could hear Alec Thomas, the cider maker there, talking about working with Jan and Schrammel and why he definitely recommends that company too. How cool was it hearing about the herm where people store their oak cask? It makes total sense that they don't have bottles because that wine in the oak barrel or the cask, it doesn't stay there for three or four years, right? It's not going to be like half empty. They have a cask and they probably go right through it. Just like in Asterius, every family there has oak casks of sidra and it doesn't last, you know, they go through it. So they're not worried about bottling it. I love that tradition. I think everybody should have oak cask in and have their own harm too. <laughs> And by the way, I have a special bonus clip from this conversation with Jan that's going to go to the Cider Chat Patreon page. And it's specific to the cider market in the U.S. from the outside looking in. And I found it super, super informative. And I think you will too, especially if you're someone who is in the business and just wondering what Europeans, how they see the U.S. market in cider. Very, very informative. And Cider Chat is a website that helps content providers like myself keep on doing the work we do by getting support from good patrons like you. So check it out by Googling Cider Chat and Patreon. Patreon is spelled P A T R E O N. Boy, I feel like I always have a long list of things for listeners of Cider Chat to do. So I don't want to make it too hard for you. You know, if you want to find the links of everything I talked about, just check it all out at ciderchat.com. You'll see it right there. Really easy to navigate the website. You go right to the main page and you'll see stuff about Cider Days 2.0, the link there. And you also see stuff about Patreon. You also find the show notes for this year episode. It's all at ciderchat.com. Dot com. And with that, I leave you here. This is Real Wind Caller signing off for now. Looking forward to seeing you in Ciderville. We like cider. We like palms. We love orchards. And having fun, there is a reason. There is a reason why we do it like this. Oh yes, there is. There is a reason why we do it like this. Oh yes, there is. There is a reason why we drink it like this. Oh yes, there is. There is a reason. We like walking through the orchards, dancing in the streets, smelling all the blossoms, kicking up our feet. We like cider. We like palms, we like orchards, having some fun. There is a reason, there is a reason why we do it like this. Oh yes there is, there is a reason why we do it like this. Oh yes there is, there is a reason why we drink it like this. Oh yes there is, there is a reason. We like walking through the orchards, dancing in the streets, smelling all the blossoms, kicking up our feet, oh yeah. We we like cider, oh yes we do, we like palms, oh yes we do, we love orchards, having some fun, there is a reason. There is a reason why we do it like this. There is a reason why we do it like this. There is a reason why we drink it like this. We like walking down the orchards, dancing in the streets, smelling all the blossoms, kicking up our feet.
know, yeah. We like cider. We like palm. Oh, yes, we do. We like orchards. Having some fun. Yeehaw!